Hello there, Only One Kenobi here, Only One. We're going in. I don't think I've ever done a full room tour before. I've done all my original trilogy stuff, all prequel stuff years ago. I'm talking bloody four years ago now. And I've done individual shelf tours, but I've never done a full room tour. Although in most of my videos you get to see a lot of my room, I just thought I would go over everything. And it's quite a good way of time locking it because I do hope to make some big changes in here very soon. The cantina, not yet backed, it's nearly there. Keep going, people. Um, it's gonna really, really change how I have this display going here because I'm pretty much in the shelf camp for that, you know? You could display the cantina like this vehicle is there like that, you know, looking down on it in a coffee table, whatever you wanna do. But I actually wanna stretch it out so it's going right across one set of shelves. As you can see, I have three shelves there. I'll put the specifications of the length of them in the uh, on, on the video <laughs> after I filmed it because I've forgotten the specs. I think it's 120 centimeters these and I think these are 80 centimeters from what I remember. I can't remember now. Still, I will get to the bottom of that for you. Um, but it will really change everything. And just on the subject of the cantina, I have one shelf here dedicated to all my cantina aliens, but look how crowded it is. And is, there's no kind of logic to it. it just, they're just all on there. Like I like to display like that, just put them all on one shelf and it's just like a movie poster. If you are new to my channel, that's the way I do it. Facing forward, nice poses, and then that's about it. But uh, I have things in chronological order. This wall here, for example, is completely original trilogy. Over here, this is all the prequel trilogy. And behind me, is a section dedicated 100% to Tatooine, from the prequels to the original trilogy. All of this are vehicles, beasts, creatures, you name it. Droids, all associated with the OT. But um, what I'm gonna do today for this room tour, because you know we could potentially go on for hours, if I was to go through every single shelf and every single section of each shelf, it would be too long. So I do encourage you to look in the description of this video where you will see a link to a series I have called Shelf Indulgence, where I look at specific shelves that correlate to specific movies. For example, all Phantom Menace, all Attack of the Clones, you get the idea. But for today, I will just hold back a little bit so you will get a sense of what I've got. You'll see the characters I have on each shelf, but I won't be going in as close as I will in the rest of that series, so do check that out. But where do I begin? Where do I begin here? There's so much to show you. I have a variety of vehicles, figures, beasts, and that is about it. Creatures, I mean. And then I have a lot of miscellaneous stuff as well. At the top here, this is a new thing that I did. Went to Ikea and I got these shelves here. They're kind of funny shelves, really. Let's see if we can have a look at them. See, like that. Um, and I just put them above the, you know, the window here. And all this stuff is just like random collection stuff. You know, I have been gifted a few of these things. That vehicle there, and you'll know where else to put it really, uh, because it was subsequently eclipsed by that B-Wing, which is way better. Um, that was gifted to me by Gary Moore over there. A mug that was gifted to me by my friend Kerry over there. Uh, Bosk Spoutney. Uh, <laughs> just, I mean, that random item there, I just didn't have the heart to put that away anywhere. The, that activates the sounds on the Imperial, the Royal Starship. That's the packaging for this baby. I must talk about that. That is a must need have thing as well for the cantina, but we'll more about that later. Um, a Yoda thing that was gifted to me by my friend Ian. That is the, the glass that my blue milk came in at Galaxy's Edge. More Galaxy's Edge, Yoga's Cantina. One of each type of detonator. Sadly, I had no other place to put this, but since he's a key part of my branding, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I thought I'd just have that one up there. And he's, uh, you know, I've got loads of vehicles around this room, but that one just didn't have a spot. So he's just up there. And then there's these other items here as well. And uh, no, I did not steal that. I was given that by a cast member. Thank you very much. You can't steal them from the rooms unless you have got a special key. <laughs> oh, since we're up here, let's stay here. 
This is something I featured a year ago. This is my Wall of the Sith. I added an extra shelf there. It needs to be painted. The Wall of the Sith is just, I'm a big fan of Sith characters and I found a spot where I could just have them all stood together. Oh, my favorite Sith. And we have now an updated Dooku, which goes nicely there. I think I need to paint the underside of these as well. And when we fall down to one of my favorite figures, if not my favorite figure of all time, Anakin Skywalker, which is the concept art Anakin for Revenge of the Sith, together with Sith Starfighter, brilliant vehicle. Let's just go up again for you. Let's start down here. We've got Darth Plagueis, Sidious, Dooku, Maul, Vader, Malgus, Revan, updated Revan. Let me just get the focus on that so you can see. Hang on, the lighting's a bit dodgy because we're right by a window. Oh, you get the idea. Uh, who's he called? Nihilus, Bane, and of course, Malak at the top there. He needs an update. I did say I wasn't gonna go too in depth, which I won't really, but I just thought I'd highlight those guys. These are corner shelves I bought from eBay. Uh, if I can give you a listing, it would only be for the UK. I will leave it in the description or something, but um, I might still have the sales data on my eBay account, but you don't have to put them in the corner of a room. I have them here flanking my prequels. If I pull back, these are all prequels and these are just really good, I find, for small vehicles and kind of almost like mini rig things and beasts, creatures like that. They're all, these all sort of correspond with the, 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 the prequels. This one breaks the law there. This is just a shelf I've had for a while now. I like this shelf. This is just a specific shelf just for Obi-Wan. Different eras of figures, different varieties. They go loud. There's your 3D printed one there. And I'll just say again, before I go any further in this video, there'll be a lot of stuff that's under construction. Pardon our pixie dust. It's just not finished like this shelf here. I've just sort of stuck some things on there that aren't ready. And this is pretty cool for Utapau. And that kind of corresponds with activity on the shelves next to them. Like, for example, all these guys are involved with the Utaba battle. So that's quite nice. Again, I like having the beasts in their own little spot or whatever vehicles and stuff like that. Just to the left of that, these are just all vehicles. Just because space is an issue in here. Space intensive. But these are all kind of, kind of cool. Um, again, you've got something for each film, really. Phantom uh, yeah, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones. And I love this Anakin here on top of this. That Anakin is actually from the speeder bike, the, the swoop bike, which it, it, it just looks rubbish. The figure is a terrible figure, but actually on top of Zam Wessel's speeder, it's awesome because he has a lightsaber out and he looks wild like he would be flying through the air of Coruscant. So I have him on there and he's on a bracket. I love these brackets. These brackets are used, I use for a lot of different things. I will show you another area where I use a bracket. A lot of people ask me where, how I get this Falcon on the wall. All it is, is two of those big brackets. I don't necessarily need them that big either. It would have sat on a smaller length, but just for safety and strength, I thought I'd have it on the biggest one I could find in B&Q, which is the UK equivalent of Home Depot, I believe. And on the end of that, you can see I've got, um, what's she called now? Enfus Nest coming off the end of that and also sat on there. Don't worry, it's not going to fall off. Watch this. Watch. It's secure. It's secure. Move on to the next one. That's literally stuck between the engines of this. But it's on the end of it. It's kind of a 3D thing coming out. I love it. That's nice. And then there's another bracket there. We've got this X-Wing sat on top of that. And I do plan, I've got a few things out here which I've not really done yet anything with them. These are future projects. Number one, the A-Wing, I'm gonna get that mounted on the wall up there as well. Oh, hang on. Ooh, there you go. Up on there. And these guys, I'm gonna also have them mounted on the wall so they look like they're swimming out at you. Stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. There's a, there's a method I've got for that that I haven't yet done. Again, this video is gonna be very spontaneous. So uh, that's a little bit about how I mount the uh, vehicles. Speaking of vehicles, uh, here is the barge, a really nice piece there, and I don't usually have it displayed like this. I usually have it uh, closed, I, I, you know, but I've thought I'd open it so you can see exactly what I've got inside it at this point in time. These are what I call B figures. They've been subsequently eclipsed by better figures. For example, that hammerhead there, he's nowhere near as good as that hammerhead there. You know what I'm saying? That's a much better hammerhead. 
Hopefully Hasbro will make an even better one for TVC. And then I've got an old Malakili in the back, Power of the Force 2. These are five POA versions of um, Bosk and IG-88. The old Greedo there. After I customised my other one, that's the soft goods that came with the VOTC. This Han Solo there, I've always had this idea that Han, straight after the Solo, a Star Wars story movie, went straight to Jabba and started working for him. So I had nowhere else to put him. So he's there. And that's it. This was a great figure for its time, but it's subsequently been beaten by my man here. Look at that figure. That's a much better version of Tessic. And the Imperial in there. I like that. I like the fact that Imperials probably would have associated themselves with Jabba, just like they did with Dryden Voss in Solo. But that's it. I don't usually display it like that open. It's like a doll's house thing. I don't like that. I like my vehicles to look like vehicles. And then, you know, when I want to open it, I can see what's in there. But usually, as you can see, they're, they're not very good figures. So I'd sooner it be closed up. But at least I know it's full inside, if that makes sense. So where should we look now? Let's have a quick look at the prequels, starting with Phantom Menace there. Again, there was a link in the description to a more comprehensive video for my Phantom Menace stuff. But on the top shelf there is Battle of Naboo. And then it does stretch over a little bit to uh, another key beast from Attack of the Clones, so it's kind of like a chronological thing in a way. More Attack of the Clones there with that uh, gunship. We'll look inside there later. And then um, I'll just skim across from the Nemodians and the Trade Federation. And I've got these here, this retro collection stuff. I don't like that there, though. I'd sooner that in an, one of these little alcoves here out the way. But I do like those figures. I love them a lot. They're really nice. That's retro collection that works for me. Um, I, let's go in order down here. You've got these guys. Uh, the Queen and her entourage. Political figures to the Jedi Council, to the Battle of Naboo at the end. You've got the... Uh, there he is there. What's he called again? Ralph Brown's character. <laughs> um, the, you know, the, the Naboo pilots there. And then the final standoff between Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan and Maul. The funeral pyre of, what's he called now, I mean, Qui-Gon. And then that's new, this custom figure of a young Dooku. That was also happening simultaneously. The end of Phantom Menace, so really you should put Yaddle there. You should have Yaddle v Dooku. That's a, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, infinite ideas. <laughs> you did whatever you want. Attack of the Clones, ladies and gentlemen. Right across there, Camino. I'll start again, this is the political area here. There's a lot of people who are associated with uh, Revenge of the Sith there, but why not? They would have all been around at the time of Attack of the Clones, so I'll put them all together. Youngling training, Camino, and then Geonosis. Down again, just a nice section of all the Jedi together. The Battle of Geonosis, you get that feel with this shelf. And then that is it. The shelf here is for the Gendi Tartakovsky Clone Wars. And I love the shelf, I love the figures that were involved with the Gendi. Realistic figures as well, I dare say. To the end with the abduction of Palpatine. Down here, recently I did a video on this in more detail, the Revenge of the Sith. Which is a great film. They need more figures and card backs in TVC for this. Um, Wookiee Army there. Down we go again. As I said before, you've got Utapau here. And we go from there to our four guys who went head to head with Sidious lost their lives. So, well, and Windu, we think. The 501st. And then the very bottom shelf, the um, situation with uh, Mustafa. Newly opened figure there, the Mustafa dude, Anakin and Obi, and then the construction or the birth of Darth Vader. And here is something else, nothing soft limits, ladies and gentlemen, that is gonna also be mounted here. I figured we need a vehicle to go with these three here to go with Revenge of the Sith and what, what better than Anakin Starfighter. I'll get that on a uh, little bracket as well. Whew, do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm exhausted already. Let's keep rolling though, let's keep rolling. The Millennium Falcon, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful. I can't have that anywhere other than there. When I do a lot of videos, you see it in the background. But I also, as you know, I have two. That's the Legacy Collection one there. This is the Galaxy's Edge TVC one right here. I'm just going to pull that back so we can get inside here. 
Um, we start off with Solo, a Star Wars story there. Above that, we've got all these vehicles here. I'll just pull back so you can get a nicer look at it. Should feel no pressure to go too close. I can do that in separate videos. But you've got a lot of vehicles on the top there. I'm gonna add the A-Wing. And then we sort of have a chronological thing here. These shells used to be 100% chronological, but then I've kind of mashed it up now so that these shells for the original trilogy are now dictated by certain diorama pieces. And I, I dare say, I won't hide from you the fact that I actually have some Mandalorian right underneath New Hope there now, which is not chronological, but still. Again, I'm just going for visual niceness. You know, it looks good and it's a good product. Mandalorian was great, as you know, and um, you know, I've just done that. But here it is a nice shelf. I, lo I don't know why I like this shelf. There's no dioramas or pieces in it, but it's just all the figures for Solo. And it was a great line. The last line we got, which was just mass production figures for a piece of film product that was out at the time. And the Rise of Skywalker soon murdered that. But everyone there from the movie, we go across to a very much a uh, New Hope, uh, sorry, Rogue One thing going on here. I'm trying to get a bit closer. I've got some tables and things I'm avoiding. This is, um, I've put him and him there. Vader and Obi-Wan from Kenobi. I love these figures, but I don't quite know where I'm going to put them, so I've just put them there temporarily. Andor, beautiful program, but we've got nothing for it, figure-wise, in TVC. It's ridiculous. And that's several years before this. This is all Rogue One here, and this as well. All that is very much Battle of Jeddah. You've got the AT-ST, the tank, Battle of Jeddah, all of that led in to A New Hope anyway. So over here is Tanti 4. And then I've got my shelf for Kenobi versus Vader. Lovely 3D printed piece there. The tractor beam terminal by Ian Butler for my B3D. I'll go in on that if you're interested. Nice that. It just fills the space, doesn't it? A variety of figures there of old Ben versus Vader from different eras of Star Wars, from vintage all the way to modern. And then we have this. The Meeting of the Twins, another diorama piece. This is from The Power of the Force 2. This is the cell block piece. So I make use of it. Loads of stormtroopers. It's a bit tight, the shelf, actually. A lovely diorama built by Solo Shot First, a good friend of mine. So it's not 3D printed, that's made by hand. And then you've got different variations of Han and Luke. <laughs> Out of costume. There's Luke in costume. You get the general idea. And then they all are, there they all are in the control room. The X wings are fixed onto the wall by an adjacent bracket like that, you see? It goes across and they come out diagonally and they just stick under the wing there. So from a distance they look like they're flying, but if you go get closer, I'm answering lots of questions I get in my comments, which is how do you get them on the wall like that? Beneath, we're breaking chronology now, ladies and gentlemen. This is all Mandalorian. This is all gonna change though, because I just thought I'd try this out and I'm fairly happy with how it looks. It just goes to show the power of these dioramas they're making. Play sets or whatever you want to call them. There's the Navarro bar. You can get a sense of what the cantina is going to be like. I can't wait for the cantina. I'm going to have it probably on three of these shelves actually. That's why I'm going to change all this. It's going to go in the background and then I've got a ton of figures I can put in the foreground. Just like I've got these guys stood like that. Like a movie poster. Or whatever, I keep saying that, movie poster. They always have each character facing forward, looking pretty good. And see how many I've got here, it's too tight. And I, that Donkey Kong machine doesn't do any favors, it just <laughs> looks like a random bar, doesn't it? But I'll spread all of them out, and it'll be great. And I can get some droids, I can have some exterior and interior, because as you know, they've got the exterior diorama piece as well. It's all modular, so I see me as someone stretching it all out. Over here, another thing for Mandalorian. Just got it the best I can have it for now. Kind of a Mando 1 and 2 vibe going on here. Those droids all came with a set and um, the end of season 1, that uh, lava droid. It's got Luke in there, just the main key characters. Apparently Hasbro are going to be doing that. That's also for me and Butler for my B3D. That's his... Um, Mandalorian Forge piece, it's lovely. 
This was gifted to me by Poly Alloy Mario, a 3D printed blurg, man. And then another thing from Ian Butler, which is this gun. I don't know what it's called technically, but it's a powerful weapon. It's what Mandalor Mando stole when he was outside the thing in Navar... What was it, Navarro? The other place it was. Arvalo, what, I can't remember. And then this shelf, I hate the shelf. <laughs> it is crap. I hate displaying, though it's my favourite film, The Empire Strikes Back. It just doesn't work. I mean, this is supposed to be Bespin here now. Look at it. Just all the characters associated with Bespin and stuff. And then, as you know, I loved it as a kid, that scene when uh, they arrived right before you did. I'm sorry. These are all old era Stormtroopers now, but I love having a whole group of them all together like that. Because I just used to love that when Lobot was coming down the stairs. And I've got that there. That could probably be. Could, I could probably do with putting that on a corner shelf because that's like a mini rig thing, isn't it? But anyway, I digress. So, yeah, I don't know what to do with that other than it's just there. This is better. I like this shelf because again, this diorama by IB3D sets everything else off. It's only Luke and Yoda and R2 in this scene and Ghost Ben. But this is a lovely shelf dedicated to Dagobah. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know where else to put them, but they're there as well. <laughs> they're very much an Empire Strikes Back thing, but again, I don't know if I'm happy with it or not. But it kind of blends into those guys, the um, aliens, the bounty hunters. Um, and then here we are with Jesus. Excuse me. Um. Got lots for Return of the Jedi. I've got over here, not only the barge I have down here. Um, this new play set, which is really good. The palace, very, very nice. And it's good for characters. But over here, just because I had it, that play set that came not long ago, about three or four years, five years now maybe? Yeah, it is five years. That's good because it's a nice place for me to display all the heroes of Return of the Jedi. The good guys and I've got another Jabba figure there which is pretty nice we've got the what do you call it the home one briefing there really nice place to display your pilots and stuff this is supposed to be Yavin but kind of like it's all a bit of a rebel thing that's better because it's got that I could do with something else to set this off and make it feel a bit more like Yavin maybe the war table or something like that would be good oh dear Leia's falling over Let's get a standing up, but um, that's where that is. Again, it's kind of temporary. I might change it soon. And down here, the last shelf before the floor is this. This is another Ian Butler 3D. This opens up and unlocks space or opportunities to display Imperials. That's the Imperial Bridge. I assume it's from the Executor. <laughs> As my BT hub there, my booster, my Wi-Fi booster, and I've got that Emperor stood in front of the LED, which makes him glow. To my right, we've got an ensemble of figures dedicated to the Bespin Jewel. From Power of the Force 2 to Vintage, so my gimbal's going a bit mental, crazy, to Modern TVC, to Vintage Saga, Power of the Force 2, 2002 line. Similar for here, this is the last duel. Emperor, Vader and Luke on Death Star 2. I'll give you a closer look at those figures another time. And the other corner shelves I have are just here. To install these a few years ago I had to sh I had to shift all these shelves across as well. It was a nightmare, but still it was worth it. So here we are at the top. <laughs> I love it. That, bit, that just reminds me of the original movie poster for New Hope. Down here, this is where I've got my Macquarie's currently. Lovely vehicle, Hans Speedo. And it's just above where I've got my solo stuff. I had to find a place for this as well. This is where I used to actually have these figures, these vintage Retro collection they are actually, but these figures, I did have them at one point, Easter egged in here. I might go back to that at some point, but for now I just thought I'd put them all together. All our heroes from A New Hope there, behind them. It's a cinema scene. So it's 
just like kind of got a bit of depth there, foreground, background. This shelf is under construction, it's just Inquisitors, but again, I don't know where to put this stuff because the Kenobi stuff is woeful. The, the amount we got and I don't know, it's just like we've got a couple of figures and that's about it. So I'd sooner have her and him in, I used to have a shelf dedicated to like the Imperial Auxiliary almost, like people like Starkiller, random droids, pilots and stuff like that. I've got a lot of those guys here now, but I'll, you know, resurrect that at some point soon. And you've got the AT-ST on here, which kind of fits on with the shelf here. I didn't show you these two shelves here. I'm so sorry. These are for Return of the Jedi again. Using a diorama to set the shelf off. In that case, it's the bunker. And I've got from Rebels to Force Ghosts to Imperial Bikers and stuff like that. And, and Ewoks. And that spreads to this uh, corner shelf here where you've got the AT-ST. The Chewy, Chewbacca one, which stands really well. And some more bikes there. There's an empty shelf there, so I can put something there. Go down again to the um, Death Star Jewel I told you about before. That's about it, I think. Let me just pull back. If I've missed anything out, let me know what you can see. But that is pretty much every shelf. It's all very much a OT thing. If you discount the Mandalorian, although that isn't a million miles away from the original trilogy. At least you know that Han, Luke and Leia are still alive. And over here, this is very much under construction. I used to have in here wardrobes. I took away the shelves and the wardrobes. And then I put a Donkey Kong machine in here, if you remember. I hated the Donkey Kong machine in the end because it kind of... I thought this was going to be a hobby room in here, you see? And I'd have things like, you know, video games and arcade machines and stuff. But no, I, I realised I had so much stuff and it was a growing collection. I wanted to make this room strictly 100%. Star Wars, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So I then in here put some Detolfs and had my helmets in here. But then the desire to just get more shelves in here was so great that I got rid of them, put them downstairs and in, ha in here are more shelves. And this was gonna be my overspill for things like Clone Wars and Mandalorian, funnily enough, and other things like, yeah, Kenobi series, all the spin-off series like Acolyte or whatever in here. Um, it's under construction. At the minute, I've got at the top all my Clone Wars stuff, including that grandstand there. These are kind of clones, I should say. I said Clone Wars. I've got Clone Wars everywhere. I've got some here, Gandhi. Down here, I've got Clone Wars TV series, Dave Filoni there. I've got, in fact, I've got all my TV series stuff there. The Rebel stuff is there. This is the TV series Clone Wars. Down here, not used, just dumping ground for now. And down here, this is almost a dumping ground, but this is all my expanded universe figures. Sorry about the state of it, there's some guys lying on their back. But I don't know what to do with all this stuff. It's just like such a breadth of years of characters and stuff. You've got like Shane Fizzler in there and Cal Kestis and, you know, you can see Mara Jade in the back there. It's the Rev, my old Revan figure. It's just a little bit of a... Took them away and keep them out of out of shot <laughs> area, but um, this is what this area was supposed to be for miscellaneous overspill, and I ain't finished with it. But the top shelf is all my clone legion dudes, individual guys that were carded. You got lots of five o first there, um, second figures for people like Cody and stuff, and bad batch things. We've had loads and loads of clones over the last few years. A really good figure in there is that amazing figure for Paz Vizsla. Not Paz Vizsla, what's the other guy called? Pre Vizsla. You got Pre Vizsla, Shea Vizsla, Paz Vizsla. So that's Pre Vizsla, I think. He's awesome. That figure is incredible. But his sword, actually, yesterday, last night, funnily enough, his sword's amazing, his dark saber, sorry, I gave it to this Mandalorian here. It's got better paint up on it, it looks more like the one in the film. The series, sorry, and Mandalorian. So he's there, and then... They're, they're lovely, those moles, you know the one I'm talking about. I've got a few more I need to open, they'll be going on that grandstand. I just thought I'd make that a very specific clone identity shelf. Below, some more realistic Filoni, Clone Wars. Um, all of these are fair game for, yeah, live action Clone Wars of the Filoni era. 
this is, um, and then this shelf here is uh, again just overspill Mandalorian. All of them are associated with Ahsoka. That's all we've got. And then here, and then look at that for Andor, man. Shocking, isn't it? Absolutely shocking. I don't know, man. It's just the way it is. It's the way the cookie has crumbled. And these are from Galaxy's Edge. I did have them on my Tatooine shelves, but ran out of ran out of space. If I back up, you'll see what I've got vehicles-wise. This beautiful, beautiful um, Republic gunship. Above that, to give you a closer look, you've got the Reek here, followed by, oh, see it from that angle, it's better. <laughs> Dooku versus Anakin. Brave of you, boy. I thought you would have learned your lesson. I am a slow learner. Got Maul looking down on Obi-Wan there. The Atat, ladies and gentlemen. It's always good to have that on a high pedestal. If you have it on the floor, it doesn't look as intimidating looking down on it, but if you're looking like that, it's just like it would be in real life. ATT and ATAT, -AT, tactical enforcer there. And below, a recent thing I opened is the Republic Gunship, the Clone Wars one from the Saga collection. That's beautiful, that. Really nice. And below that, the Arc 170, both with Rancor face, teeth, Tiger Shark, whatever you want to call it. Again, there's more things I could do there, including putting more Clone Wars figures, including some Jedi, maybe, potentially. And then over here is the Tatooine stuff. Top shelf is dedicated to, to creatures. And there's loads of creatures that appear in Tatooine from the Rancor in episode six to the Ronto in the special edition episode four. And then you've got Kenobi. That's really for Qui-Gon, that uh, Oppie. Do you back? Bantha? It's just a very amazing planet. Tatooine. Looking forward to changing things around here again, but you've got some... I like seeing that vehicle on that eye line, you see, so it's there, but... Do I like having it next to this episode one stuff? Not really. So I'm going to move it all around. It's just, it's a work in progress. But I wanted to showcase these vehicles. I used to have the episode one vehicles up at the top shelf there. But uh, I thought I'd get everything Tatooine together, you see. Used to just be original trilogy Tatooine here. And I'd have all my Phantom Menace Tatooine stuff there. But I decided to go all out. But um, it is what it is for now. Then we've got the homestead. Droid sale. I put lots of things on that droid shelf. Loads and loads of stuff. Miscellaneous, look, things that are just accessories I find, I'll put them on there because the droids, the Jawas, whatever, it would all, you know, they'd have so much junk, spare parts and whatever. So I have it, I'll put it there. Even Lola's there, look, see? And these are like spare bits that come with legacy collection figures, legs and heads of droids and stuff. That's the thing that comes from the N1 Starfighter, the Mando N1 Starfighter. Mouse droid there, that gizmo, look at that. And then below, ladies and gentlemen, very much a Book of Boba Fett thing there. Even this does remind you of Book of Boba Fett. You find Tusken Raiders all throughout, from Attack of the Clones to Mando Season 1 to A New Hope, obviously. But um, that's the way I've got that shelf. You see, unlike Andor, you've got at least this piece here which means you can pull in other characters that appeared in the book of Boba Fett so that's why they're just sort of there really except for him he's Mando season one I don't know what he's doing there and then of course the cantina please do see the full video on the characters I have it's um it's brilliant collecting uh, cantina aliens is an awesome thing to do collecting wise I can't wait to give them a proper home, you know what I mean? Down here, more for me and Butler, Ben Kenobi's house, and Anakin's hovel home house as well. And in front, you've got pod racers. Stuff's falling over here, sorry folks. You've seen these down here. This is just a place for my felony animated Disney sort of figures. They're great figures, fully articulated. 
I didn't show you this, but down there, excuse again, the mess is the Queen's Starfighter. It's not a Starfighter, what am I talking about? The Royal Starship. A Naboo Royal Starship goes there. Just imagine Jabba having one as a, a collection piece in his palace. Speaking of Jabba's palace, that's here. I can't wait to do something with that. Sorry if I'm too close, it's out of focus. I've got a table in the way. I have the band and things here. And then above, of course, the barge. You saw that before. On this shelf here, you've got loads of stuff that's just junk in the middle of dealing with it. That's a spare skiff. I'm going to have that the other side of the barge when I'm ready. Some spare figures here. I need to put them away, really. I'm not doing anything with them. Tidy up a bit. And then figure stands, screwdrivers, there's lots of DIY goes on in here. And this is, uh, check it out, BOE. The Red Army Bunker, original laminated poster from the Blacked Out Ewoks. Not signed, gutted. Apparently he's sending me something else that is signed. <laughs> and then of course the Razor Crest. And then of course the Razor Crest. One of the centerpieces there other than the barge and the falcon. This is space here that's gonna have the ghost, I think. Um, I need to just pull these back, hang on. These tables here, I've just been filming on them. Oh look, Ian Butler stands, incredible figure stands. Need to open this as well, that's my new copy. I've never read the Throne Trilogy, but I will. And I told you about the a wing, didn't I, and those two figures there. But this is a f sh table I have been filming on that. I used to film on that table that's in there. You see the one that's got the ATAT on it in the ATT? That used to be here and was here for about two years down here. But it fit in so nicely there that I just thought I'd change it and have it there. You know what I mean? Below, by the way, the one of my favorite vehicles, the Star Speeder 1000 from Star Tours. Love that. Inside there are loads of figures. Um, I really think I've kind of shown you all the main things here. I I did have the MTT. I used to have that. I don't know really. I used to have it. It fits anyway. It can fit actually in here. It's quite quite a lot of space between the top and bottom of those shelves there. I used to have it sat on there for a bit. I've had it in there on the floor. I actually had it mounted flying, c coming down like that is. See the um, gunship there. I had, had it on a bracket, sort of like, but it didn't make sense because it doesn't really float that high in the air anyway. But um, I used a couple of brackets and had it on the top of the door there. It's great. And when you come in the room, it's just interesting. It's not going to fall off there, but you can see it right above your head. And you think, whoa, what's that? <laughs> so I like that. Um, there's enough clearance for it. Let me just show you. So when you come in now, it's kind of like right there. Pivot. <laughs> I like it. Um, and it kind of links in again. I like that. I don't know if that's just being anal or what. OCD, but I like it kind of fitting with other stuff that's linked to it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if I showed you over here. Let's have a look at these shelves. Uh, again, not massively happy about this. A big part of me wants to get all of the stuff related to Empire Strikes Back. You know, I said I was struggling with that stuff there. Um, maybe have a shelf dedicated to the Battle of Hoth in there, since I've got the Attack there. Don't know, I'm working on it. But for now, this is kind of mini riggy type things, and uh, that's new, me having the snow speeder coming off the top there. Don't like it, because it's interfering with Return of the Jedi stuff, and uh, that's just me, ladies and gentlemen. Please excuse the OCD. But apart from that, all these do have kind of a sort of a mini riggy type thing for Empire. So you've got the back to tank there. Beasts, big big fan of having them on these shelves anyway, but you've got the you know the, the Tauntauns and the Wampa. Great figures there. You've got the Rebel Laser there, with some of the characters, outdoor guys. The pilots, the Hoth pilots. Sorry, Daniel. Daniel Chart was absolutely tearing his hair out of the fact that Dak Rattler was that uh, Hobby, sorry, was there. Because the Hobby's wearing black gloves there, and that's not right. As he's very true, the snow speeders pilots, snow speeder pilots have um, grey, grey gloves. Speaking of which, this is one of the figures I'm going to be giving away when I hit 10,000. 
I'm going to be giving that away, ladies and gentlemen. That's a custom Wedge Antilles Snow Speeder vintage collection carded figure there. And this is all the interior of Echo Base. And then down here we have. Blah, 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 blah. See, just Imperials. I mean, these are. This is my favourite film, man. My favourite film, my favourite characters. And they're all just sort of like. Meh. I don't like really putting figures en masse on these corner things. I'd sooner have like something there, like a centerpiece, an icon of some kind, like that. These are all good together. You know, background there. But all of them. Yeah, I could put them inside the vehicles, but then you wouldn't see them, would you? And you've got the meditation chamber there. I don't know why Han stood next to him. And then there's that terrible version of the Captain Scarlet version. Or it's like um, Thunderbirds, that, isn't it? It's the concept art of the cloud car. Yeah, this stand here, I like, I've, I've loved this stand forever. And it's just good for having smaller vehicles. I've actually, I think I had the snow speeder on there at one point. I might do that yet again. Just like nice low, low height vehicles are good on there. Um, yeah, speaking of inside vehicles, this is what I have, I'm gonna have to sniff this man because it's when it's shut, it, it seals in all the goodness, the aroma. Inside here I've got vintage 80s, hang on. Oh God, that takes me back, that smell. These figures still smell like they used to. They're not figures from my childhood. These are the figures I bought subsequently. The figure I had for the Attack driver, I lost it years and years ago. But they have a smell, even to this day. Like petroleum or something, man, I love it. Never, ever, ever had a TIE Fighter pilot, so I can't comment on this strawberry thing, but the reason they're in there is because they are not the best looking figures anymore, are they? They're classic, yes we know, but at least there's something in the cockpit doing a job, but they're not as visually incredible as, for example, this is the best ATAT driver right here. Hasbro, get that sorted, please. Bring it out. Fully articulated. They're all pretty good, aren't they? I think, pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, that is everything I've shown you in here. And um, it, what are we on now? I've, on my counter, it's 43 minutes. and probably cut that down maybe a little bit. We're over 40 minutes. So, oh, there is something else I haven't shown you. There, that was also a gift to me. 3D printed. What are they called again? Krikna. The Krikna Spider, and I've got another Mando figure there, and Grogu. These are the ones that came out officially, those little ones there. And then they go into the big fella, or female, there. So that's uh, pretty cool, and it, yeah, it works. It goes with the Razor Crest. It's all relative to Mando. That's pretty good. And down here is such a disappointment, this diorama. Look at the crap underneath as well. Can you see that? I don't even know what that is. Um, there's a letter from somebody there. It says, oh, okay, slash Nick. Uh, that is the, um, speaking of Bespin and stuff, it's the diorama for the carbon chamber of, yeah, it probably might go in here, actually, I might set it up again. You know, I've got part of it over there in the corner. That's the best bit of it, the steps. You put a light behind them, they're great, but I don't know, man. It's a lot of space for very few characters, and that brings me to Michael French, Retro Blaster, in his video, when he was laying into the cantina. What was he talking about? It would be better, he said, to have a, an Emperor's throne room, he said, and, and maybe something for Bespin. Well, that's the thing about Bespin. I'll agree with you there, mate. I'll, I'll meet you halfway. I need something for my Bespin stuff. Maybe a corridor or something like that would be good for me. But a Haslab? And then he said something about Dagobah. Like, well, look at that. Does that need to be a Haslab, that one little hut there? I don't think so, pal. And he said something about having the X-Wing. Yeah, all right, fair enough. But it would just be very specific. It would be one X-Wing buried in a swamp in one square piece, taking up a load of space. Just like this thing takes up a load of space. That's why I hate it. For what? For, for three characters? An Ugnaught, Vader, and Luke? Or maybe more. You can have Lando, I suppose. Going on. All right, fair enough, pal. I'll bite. You can have Stormtrooper, I suppose. Leia, the Wookiee, sure. But with the Cantina, man, come on, wake up. You've got so much going on. Not only for A New Hope, you've got Mandalorian now, you know what I mean? You've got stuff from the EU. <coughs> anyway, I'll leave it there before I say anything I shouldn't. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. This is the 2024 tour of the room. I'm glad I've done that to timestamp it and show you what I have in here because I think the big changes are going to happen very soon. Oh, you see that thing spinning over there, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, the probot is on the move. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Or is it just
scraping the wall a bit there. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. I hope I've not waffled on too long, but it's coming to an end right now. This has been Only One Kenobi. Only One. Thank you.